welcome to the latest episode of Unfiltered Conversations. I'm your host, Ryan McNeil. I'm thrilled to be joined by Scott, the pit master at Tejas Chocolate and Barbecue here in, uh, it's the Texas, Houston area. Where exactly is your restaurant again? Yeah, it's in Tomball, Texas, which is a basically a bedroom community for Houston. It used to be mostly a commuter area, but now the area's grown so much. There's a lot of, especially work at home. So uh, Houston and Tomball, it's getting harder to tell the, the distinction between when you left one and got to the other. It's all a big blur now. Let's get into some of the questions I have for you. I only sure. have a handful of questions, so I won't keep you too long. The first question, Scott, is when did you fall in love with barbecue? That was not long after we moved to um, to Houston, to be honest with you, in 1976. Um, I was pretty young. I was, I guess I was, I can't remember if I was 11 or 12. I, was, I must have been 12, 12 years old. And um, the area wasn't very populated, but uh, it was you could, starting to grow. And down the road from our neighborhood was uh, a place, it was called Strock Farms. And they had a long run, but in those days they had a little vegetable stand, almost the side of the road, farmers market and vegetable stand. And next to the vegetable stand, they had a little barbecue shack. And they had like one or two tables in that place, and it was mostly to go. And we would go there to get to get barbecue. And they had a sandwich. I don't remember the name of, but it was a barbecue poor boy. It had brisket, sausage, and ham and a coleslaw and a hoagie roll and uh it was just wonderful so we got introduced to brisket at that age and uh so that was my first hook probably it was like wow you know i'm i like good food for starters and that was that was it so um we would go there we went there at least once a week for many many years um and uh and then you know my mom was a great cook i grew up cooking and um, as I got older, I just got uh, attracted to the idea of um, cooking outside. Um, a lot of my friends and family know me as a closet pyromaniac and uh, <laughs> like playing with fire. So I was like fire and meat. This is a perfect combination for me. So I was pretty young uh, age and young family starting to barbecue in the backyard at home. I moved to Texas in March. So in March and April, I was here been back in Canada for the spring and the summer. And the first thing I bought when I was back in Canada was a Traeger grill. Yeah. And I'm still learning. And for me, a lot of it's going on YouTube and, and learning from say meat church and different YouTube accounts. So for you, was it just a lot of trial and error in the backyard grill? Are there people that you've learned from? How have you grown as a pit master? Yeah. I mean, when I started with barbecue, it was before the Google age, really. Um, didn't have a PC, and it was all trial and error, just you know, cooking and experiment, you know, experimenting. And um, I had a neighbor; he was older, and um, he was a pretty good barbecue guy. He would give me some tips here and there uh, on the things that he liked to do. Um, and um, it was it was hands on you know, messing up some stuff, learning from that experience and moving on, you know, usually the biggest mistake I would make would be not starting, you know, the bigger meats soon enough. And so on Sunday, the family stand around, you know, looking at their watch, wondering when dad's going to be cooking. Um, so, you know, I, I usually got things done pretty, pretty right, but, um, you know, yeah, trial and error. And then, and then later, you know, as became a professional and the Google age was out there, you know, I, I would watch instructional things on YouTube or the internet or read things. And then, um, you know, it might point you in a little different direction or get you to hone in a certain technique that you're doing or confirm that, oh yeah, well, I've been doing it right all along. Something that I love about your restaurant is you figured out how to marry savory, so um, the bar barbecue, with, with sweet, so like chocolate. Yeah. When did you get hit with the idea, hey, I can take chocolate and sweet stuff and mix it with barbecue? How did that come to fruition? Yeah, I wish I could say honestly that I dreamed that up one day. So, you know, let's do, uh, let's make chocolate as a dessert for barbecue, but that's not how it happened. So, um, 
I was in the railroad industry for many years and um, just a hobby foodie, you know, foodie person. I got I got interested in the process of making chocolate from the cocoa bean. And uh, I started doing it as a hobby and just something to do and something to tinker with. It's an unusual thing, you know, you don't see very often. And um, I just started doing that. And it um, it got good enough to where we got encouraged to sell it. And so we came up with a brand and we were thinking of, you know, you know, as a business opportunity, can we sell chocolate to make a living? So we started selling chocolate at a local farmer's market and did pretty well. And we started, we developed a little bit of a wholesale business, but it was, it was strictly a side hustle. Um, I had this other company that I was running that, you know, was paying the bills and um, that was, that started to hit some stormy waters and I had to make a decision about that company and ultimately ended up deciding to shut it down and focus on uh, on a chocolate to make a living. Well, the truth is there wasn't enough chocolate revenue to pay for a facility, uh, to make it, produce it, and also pay myself enough money to you know keep the lights turned on at home and pay the mortgage. <laughs> and um, we just kind of scratched our heads about that was uh, me and Michelle, my wife Michelle, and my brother Greg we were doing this scratched our heads about what we can do to add a revenue stream. And um, we was like, you know, Greg's a chef. I'm a backyard barbecue warrior. Ma Michelle is a gourmet cook. You know, Tomball doesn't, you know, there's barbecue in Tomball, but there's not a, a place in Tomball that's doing, you know, craft meats, you know, using prime grades of meats, that, that type of thing. So, we, you know, in Texas, there's always room for another barbecue place, right? And, but we felt like there was an underserved segment here that, premium barbecue so that's literally how we started we um said well we can sell 300 plates of barbecue at 12.95 a head a week we can make enough money to pay all the bills and we'll you know we'll be able to do our chocolate thing and, and barbecue is just going to be a supplement to our income that's how it got started and uh, i don't think anybody ever gets up one day and says that has a barbecue place yeah let's just make chocolate <laughs> for desserts it's just it's crazy to think about doing that so um it just it just it just kind of worked out it was just um i like to say it was just god's plan for us you know we tried to follow the steps and make good decisions and a lot of it just sort of took care of itself and um it's pretty neat to see the way it's uh, blossomed into the thing that it has today i was a teacher for almost 20 years back in canada and i've it's been about two years now i've been full-time running a media company and a sports journalist and my listeners and people watching on YouTube, they like to hear the highs and the lows. And I feel that they learn from mistakes and they learn from some of the low points on how not to copy that themselves. So is there a low point that has helped pro project you to this, this point? Is there, is there a mistake that you've learned from that that you kind of want to share to other pit masters watching? Um, basically something that was tough in the past that now in hindsight your company's stronger for because of going through well we had to we didn't have a whole lot of money and you know the even though the building was in pretty good shape we still took some money to do the build out and and do all that and uh, it um it took longer than expected to get open and the money the money supply got very low and um so when we got open, you know, literally, you know, we, the phrase sweat equity was us all the way through and through. We, we, me and Greg and Michelle opened the doors with uh, two employees. And, um, and so the days are long and we had to put in the hours and um, the building, um, you know, we're a destination barbecue restaurant in every sense of the word. Um, because we're not in a high traffic area, we don't get a lot of trip, you know, just people driving by and go, Oh, there's a restaurant. Let's go check it out. You know, you had, you kind of had to know we were here and, um, we, uh, we had a little bit of a social media following It helped a little bit, but we were off the beaten path. And, um, the first, first two years in particular, you know, they were, they were, it wasn't easy by any stretch, it, you know, it was you worked all week to the point of exhaustion, uh, slept as fast as you could on Sunday and got back at it again on Monday. And uh, so, you know, 
legitimate 80, 90 hour weeks was pretty common for us. And, uh, um, but we just kept, we just kept believing that we were, you know, we were, we were reliant on what people were telling us, the feedback we were getting from the people that were coming to our restaurant, the people that were coming back again. I always tell everybody, I said, you know, nothing, nothing says I love you like a reorder. So, um, you know, believing in that. And you know, we went through this process. I, I like to call it the filtering process where the regulars of other barbecue joints in the area came through and we just weren't their style and they were pretty rough on us and on some review sites for a while. And um, I probably got overly defensive about some of that because, you know, when you're when your business is new and you're struggling and you're not sure how you're going to make payroll and your mortgage at home and all that, you have a rough week and somebody, some turd leaves you a one-star review that's unwarranted or stupid or whatever. It can, <laughs> I've got, I, I just kind of want to snap sometimes. Yeah. I, I was kind of known for that a little bit, but um, so I've, I've restrained myself a little bit and kind of let that, let that stuff go because taste is always subjective. I mean, people like what they like. And then the value of that is totally subjective as well. It's perceived, perceived value. And, um, but I, I believed in what, you know, it was crazy how we would get so many compliments on a particular dish on a restaurant. And then we'd find somebody to give us a horrible review about the same very thing. And I'm like, how is that even possible? And then you realize we're all human beings. People like what they like. So, um, you know, put on a cup, grow a thick skin, skin, however you want to say it, but just believe in yourself and believe what your feedback you're getting from the people that you're, you're looking at, uh, looking you in the eye. And um, so it was, um, that, that would probably be my strongest statement is that, you know, be prepared for the commitment and time and uh, energy, and it won't be easy. It's not, you know, it doesn't happen overnight, but if you believe in it, you will, you'll get there. You will build a set of regulars that will follow you and support you. And you can make, you can make a living doing it for sure. When you have a chance to reflect on, on the life of your company, what are some aspects that you really appreciate? What, what are some of these high marks or what are some of the rewarding aspects that you're like, wow, this made all that sweat equity, all these a 90 our work weeks, it made it worthwhile. Well, there's a lot of things, you know, the, the easy, quick and easy are some of the accolades we've received from you know, like being on the list of Texas monthly, the true honor, um, same thing with Southern living magazine and some of the Chronicle list. And then, you know, the, all, there were so many things that domino effect from the being on the list with Texas monthly back in 2017, it led to TV shows and all kinds of, free coverage and, and you know getting recognition for that for your work um is is pretty rewarding it's nice to receive that but for me today um michelle and i we really look at our business as almost it's uh, it's our ministry and um and i mean that um you know we're a place where locals and and day trippers but you know the locals that come to enjoy it's their place like we just got done with the holiday season we're extremely busy, in particular the week between Christmas and New Year's every year. And it's because of the families that live here got the out of town families in and they want to take them to their favorite barbecue joint. And you see that and there's a lot of pit tours that happen, a lot of questions, excitement. And, um, you know, to know that people think of us that way, hey, this is a, this is a restaurant I want to bring my family to, to show off is pretty pretty rewarding and then i think the last thing that i get really excited about is our as our staff our crew uh, that we've built um we have we have so many really cool stories um Brittany, who runs up front for us she moved out here from in town in a bad situation she's a resident here now and she just loves this place Luis and emma um, who just got back from vacation a paid vacation and he's been in the USA for 18 years. And last year, he's been working for me now for three years. I guess it was a year before last, he took a week's vacation. It's the first first time he'd had more than one day off in, <laughs> in 18 years. And he got a paid vacation. So he just took his last, his second paid vacation uh, of the year. And uh, 
So I'm, I'm just grateful to be able to provide that for people that, you know, a place to hang their hat, and feel good at, they're excited about coming to work, they're having fun, it supports their home. Um, so it, we've just built this thing here. We now have, we now have between our barbecue restaurant and our burger restaurant, we have 48 employees. And um, so it's um, that element of it, I think gets me more excited than anything. I got a hold of you through Instagram and that's how I follow all your updates. <laughs> I'll put that link in um, the YouTube and, and the podcast. What are the primary social media channels that you or your team use so that barbecue fans can be updated? And when they're in the Houston area, they know your hours and all that, all that important stuff. So they can come have some of your great barbecue. Yeah, we're uh, we're big on Instagram. I like it because the food, you know, we eat with our eyes and Instagram is such a good visual format. It's quirky and fun and quick and easy. And you see a picture, you know, a little description. And um, so we're we're like that. So it's Tejas Chocolate on Instagram, Tejas Burger Joint on Instagram. I have my own. It's Scott Moore Jr. on Instagram where I, I, I kind of deviate from the restaurant a little bit and cover some other things. So um those are those are the three big ones and then uh on facebook as well at pay house chocolate um not real big on twitter these days um but facebook and instagram is where you'll really find us scott thank you for your time i really appreciate it oh my pleasure ryan thanks for having me good to see you good to meet you